A year ago, few ever heard the name George Santos. But after winning a house seat in 2022, much of his life was exposed as a lie. He became a joke on late night TV and a pariah in Congress. And when he arrived in Washington 10 months ago, he wanted nothing to do with those of us in the Capitol Hill press corps. Mr. Santos, why did you lie to your voters about your qualifications, your past, being Jewish? What has the speaker said to you, Mr. Santos? When you stop lying when you're really so, bad reporting, I'll start talking. So, wait, you actually were on a volleyball team? Is that right? Where was the, what was the source of your funds, sir? What was the source of that money? So, you said you were explaining the change in your campaign finance filings. You have not done that yet. Why is that? Why haven't that you explained? Why haven't you explained that yet? He has a very different attitude now. He agreed to sit with me on Friday, even as he's facing 23 federal criminal charges related to, among other things, how he raised and spent money for his campaign. He has pleaded not guilty. He did not to win last week when the House defeated a resolution to expel him from Congress, but that could be short-lived. The House Ethics Committee is nearly done with its own investigation of Santos, and that could trigger another expulsion vote. He told me that even if he loses that vote, he'll run again in 2024. So if they expel you and then they put someone else in the seat, you're going to run in 2024. Absolutely. Uh Can you win a primary given all these things that are lined up against you? Yes. And the general election. This is a a Biden leaning district and you have all these issues against you. Could I have won the general election last time? Nobody said I could, but I It was a different situation. No, no, I understand. But elections are tricky. There's no predetermined outcome. What is the rationale for running for re-election? Why should a voter entrust you with two more years? Manu, What have you done to deserve re-election? Manu, I am the most conservative New Yorker in the entire delegation with the most conservative record of all my colleagues. I'm the only one that if you look at my campaign website and the campaign promises as far as policies I made, I haven't broke a single promise. You look at all my other colleagues, they all break promises. They all bend and vote one way or another to benefit whatever special interest is in this state. But they're not facing federal charges. That's fine. But here's at the end of the day, the people are sick. I go back home. I go into you call it rallies, protests. I, I, I'm i in the fray with them. They love it because I represent their voice here. They like the fact that I'm a scrappy guy. I come here, I do my job, and they feel like it's one of them here. So the, on these charges, is there any chance you would accept a plea deal? Uh, I'm not exploring any of that right now, right? The, those conversations uh, are yet to be had. Uh, but they may happen. I, I don't know. I don't know. Right now, I'm I'm pretty focused on my defense and putting together my defense with my attorney. But you're not ruling out a plea deal. What from what I'm I, hearing? I'm not from saying you. I'm not. I'm not saying I'm not ruling out. As of right now, it's it's not on the table. Yeah, but as of tomorrow, it could be. I suppose. Like I said, I don't know. The feds are saying uh, that you and your campaign treasurer conspired to make it appear your campaign was hitting fundraising benchmarks to get on the radar of GOP officials. You say, did you know about this? Manu, I never, ever submitted or even looked at a single report. So but obviously, I, yeah. for me to sit here and unpack this for you, yeah. I, I essentially ruin my defense. Sure, right? I, I understand so that. I can, just, I can just tell you this uh, to, to save you yeah. the time. Yeah. As far as all the allegations, remember how a campaign works. I'm a candidate. Candidates do not handle money. Candidates do not handle finances. Candidates do not handle filings. I don't even know what the FEC filing system looks like to give you a, a, a well-rounded. But they say that you have, they have text messages and emails where you guys are talking about all of this. I would love to see them. Do you not believe what it says in it's the not indictment? not that I don't believe. It's really easy to take things out of context. Because one of the things they say is that there's a $500,000 loan that you made. I made, oh, I made five hundred thousand. But you had eight hundred eight thousand dollars in your bank account, and they say there's no evidence that that like five hundred thousand dollars. Like I said, I, 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 I made, I made, I can guarantee you that I made the financial loans to my campaign that are on the record. So, but even though you didn't have the money in your account, so I, where did you, where did that I, come I'm from? I'm very interested, interested to know uh, where they get that information. So, from, so. that's that you're saying is I, I'm completely, defend, I'm totally going to defend that. Yep, hundred percent. Because because Nancy Marks, your treasurer, she said in court. I did these things in agreement with co-conspirator number one, that's you, for his benefit to obtain money for the campaign by artificially inflating his funds to meet thresholds set by National Political Committee. So why would she say that? People will say whatever they have to say, cut whatever deal they have to cut in order to save their hide. And I, this isn't surprising. I don't know why people so are so So she's making stuck. this up in court? I, I, I'm not accusing her of anything. All I'm saying is she has her story. I'm going to come with my facts and I'm going to tell, tell my side of the story. Because they're saying that you got in credit card information from donors 
and jacked up their contributions beyond the federal campaign finance limits. And I, I don't even. I, didn't I, even, I can I didn't show even, you the citations. No, no, I, here. I've seen the citations, yeah. Manu. I, I didn't even handle uh, donations. A lot of that happened in our campaign. And whenever people would say, oh, uh, it got charged again, we would refund them. It's on the reports, sure. at least to the best of my knowledge. They're saying the donor contacted you directly. Yeah, look. I'm not going to get into specifics. I can say that I did not handle uh, donations in my campaign. Because in one case, it says it even went to your personal bank account. Roughly yeah. twelve thousand dollars. You bought designer goods. You benefit yourself with a donor's so essentially, money. Essentially, everything I do, everything I've ever spent uh, in my account is going to be deemed as, oh my God, George Santos stole money. George Santos bought designer clothes. That's what I buy. I mean, I've been a client of, of the same stores for many years. And if you go and you go through my closet, you'll see. It's not like I amassed and bought all my clothes, all my shoes uh, in the last uh, campaign. Okay. So there, so obviously you're, you're very much denying that. Are you also, you had mentioned that perhaps there was some issue with the jobless benefits because the allegation, the indictment is that you defrauded them, pretended you were unemployed. There are twenty-four thousand dollars in jobless benefits. Is that true? Look, I'm not going to get into the to the to the nitty gritty of of the pandemic. Um, I, I beg I beg defer to say that the entire country can get indicted. I'm pretty sure, based on how crazy times were. So, but you admit there was something. Uh, I'm not admitting amiss. anything. I, I'm I'm yeah. saying that I did, in my defense, what I think I was qualified for. Now. Let's make this very clear. In any other circumstance, a person that goes and takes a, a unemployment check and then God, God willing, like, oh, no, you actually didn't qualify because you you quit. You were not terminated. So you didn't qualify for benefits. You don't indict that person. You know what? Every single time it happens, they go ahead and deduct it from your taxes. They they put a lien on you. Oh, you can't take unemployment benefits. Oh, oh. Or every year they'll, they'll just chip away at it slowly. I got indicted. Mm -hmm. So just just put that on the scale. So you're saying this this is a common error. Twenty four thousand dollars is a lot of money. I'm not saying common error, and I'm not saying twenty four thousand dollars is not a lot of money. I'm just saying there's people out there who have gone through this process of overtaking a check or two or whatever the case is, and then just having to pay it back. But nobody gets it criminally indicted. It's crazy. In the indictment, it says, and this is a serious part about filing false reports with the house, allegedly. Financial, they said you made up your income. And that could be a problem for your ethics problem. What happened? I mean, did you not list your income properly here? All I, all I, can, say, all I can say is, first, no, that's not true. Second, uh, were there mistake made on those forms? I'm, now I know they were. Uh, was I, were they malicious? No. And I'm a new candidate and I'm sorry that like mistakes were made, but it's another, here's another thing. Every time somebody suspects there's a mistake on your ethics report, you know what happens? The ethics committee reaches out and said, hey, this looks funky. Guess what happened? That never happened. So you acknowledge mistakes were made on your I've income? I've acknowledged that, mul not my income, on the forms. Yeah. I've, I've well, acknowledged that, that. Manu, I, did, I didn't understand the forms. Yeah. That's just plain and simple. But you filled out those forms. With some help, but most like, most of them, yes. I wonder just as is running a campaign, you know, you're putting this a lot on the treasurer. You're the chief of the campaign. That's not true. You're not, but you're in charge, right? No, you're, that's you know? not true. Should the I, buck stop I, at you is do, my question. Well, the buck should stop at the candidate. That's true. I want to take you back to the scene on the House floor this week. It was so intense. You know, you heard from your colleagues going after you in very, very personal terms. Before we get into the details of it, what was that moment like for you? Oh, you know, that moment for me was, was I, I, at that point, I understood politics. It doesn't matter what side you're on. It's about political expedience. Uh, and I understood that wholeheartedly. So the New point. York freshman Republicans yeah, I, are I, doing this for? It's all political. They wanted to go on the record that they, they so much so reject me that they did this on the House floor so they can save face locally back home. I'm not going to sit here and continuously debate uh, my entire life. Look. As a human being, have I made mistakes? Have I, and have I owned up to them? Yes, I have. But it feels like everybody wants to obsess over that. I, I wish But it's hope. kind of important, right? Well, like well, what you said important. about your past. No, look, mean... It's important, Manu. It would be also important if every single person in this building with a glass house stopped throwing stones at other people and started looking at themselves, mm -hmm. right? Because I'm pretty sure there's a lot of things that these guys don't talk about themselves that they would hate for me to come here and sit and talk to you sure. about. 
there's so many more questions that can be asked, but you all insist on going down the same path. But it's important because it's your important. voters, your voters thought they were electing Manu, one person. Nobody elected me. True. Nobody elected me because I played volleyball or not. Nobody elected me because I graduated college or not. People elected me because I said I'd come here to fight the swamp. I'd come here to lower inflation, create more jobs, make life more affordable, and the commitment to America. That's why people voted for anybody. To say that they voted based on anybody's biography, I can beg you this. Nobody knew my biography. Nobody opened my biography who voted for me in the campaign. But you, but you acknowledge, though, fabricating large portions of your life. So why did that happen? I'm just wondering, people want to know why. Manu, why did he do Manu, it? we've gone through this. I've gone through this on Pierce Morgan. I've gone through sure. this with Eric But it's Burnett. still a question. Like, it's still I get a question. It. How about we talk? Look, we are. We know all but the things But can you just answer did. me, but well, why, but why? I've already told you this. It's insecurity, stupidity. I don't know. Look, I'm human. We make mistakes. I've apologized and I will continue to apologize profusely for this and, and with remorse. I Look, I am the first one to jump and say, I messed up. I made a mistake. Let me fix this. Tell me what this year has been like for you. Hell. 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 Hell in the most profound way.